Folks, we got a fun topic today. The ship backlog is uh, probably more exciting for players than new ships. It's the gift that keeps on giving. The ship backlog never goes away. Um, and we've actually had some really great ways of tracking that over the years. So, your boy, Colonial Movers, um, they are an org. You can check out their org on RSI. I always want to give some love to the folks who are providing these sources with all this great information and these wonderful graphs and tables and things that tell us all about how many, <laughs> how many goals we've missed. Um, but yeah, so they are an org also post on other places with their documents and stuff. I've got their pictures pulled up here. Sorry to all my people who are used to dark mode. I'm trying to blind you today. That's just how it is. We've got a full on list here that shows how ships have been entered into the backlog into Star Citizen's sort of concept pool, uh, when they've been created, at what rate they've been created over the years, and from what sizes of ships have been created. It gets into detail. So we are going to dive into this and I'll be taking questions throughout your shady remarks. Sprinkle a little salt on the chat. You know how it is. It's the backlog. No punches held. Thank you for joining me. Let's dive in. I think the first thing to talk about, though, before we really dive in, is what ships are in the backlog. Because it tends to come down to, it wasn't up until maybe 2018, 2019, this started to be more true, but it tended to come down to like any ship that had a hefty amount of gameplay that had to go into it um, would end up just not getting made super quickly. And this obviously centered a lot around capital ships. So like the Javelin, the Genesis Starliner, the Orion, the Hull series, the Banu Merchantman, the Polaris, the Pioneer <laughs> is a big one, and the Kraken. These are like the givens. But there are also quite a few of these concepts that probably shouldn't be in the backlog and that's what we're starting to see taken care of more often now that'd be things like the g12 or the um the x1 or what is something that came out uh, the hull a i guess the hull a still kind of was using some uh some physics grid stuff but you start to see some of these smaller ships that really shouldn't be in the backlog getting taken care of but the main thing to look out for is like specialized gameplay and size of ship that's what pushes them back usually Let's check out the C1. And these are, you know, everybody's got their uh, belief, their theories as to why these ships would get worked on so quickly after being introduced as concepts. Usually it's um, because of Squadron 42 or, or there's something very particular gameplay wise that they need to do and they want to introduce with one of the ships. The A1 makes sense for size 5 bombs, I guess. And the E1 makes sense for passenger transport, which they aren't seeming to do right now. I don't know why the C1 will be needed, but that might just be the extra little cash cow they introduced with it. Either way, it could also be that they just needed to fit a ship into this size range and wanted to get one out fast. So these are both due for, let's hop onto the roadmap real quick. These are both due for our 3.20.x launches. So in some branch after 3.20 comes out, most likely October or November-ish, they'd be great IAE ships. And you can see them down here. The A1 got on here before the C1. Had You had me there for a little bit, CIG. But they got the C1 on here, and I'm guessing we're all still waiting to hear from the E1, which probably won't happen until passenger transport. So, going back to the, the backlog, the A1 and C1 are going to get passed off this year in 2023, but the, the, the E1 likely is going to be a little while longer. In fact, I don't even know if we're going to get passenger transport before 4.0. I did... I did theorize we might get it this year, but it's starting to feel like maybe that is also something they realize that's not worth putting time into until the AI are running better, which means better server support, which means server meshing, which means 4.0, which means we have to wait. So that will be one ship staying in the backlog from the Spirit series. But C1 and A1, you can get excited for. Those seem to be coming in the next few months. Good stuff too. I love the look of this ship. This is like... I hate that this is what I've come to, but this might now replace the MSR as my daily driver. 
the original MSR concept was really the quintessential daily driver, I think, at least in terms of form. Um, I mean, this thing looks so good in the concept art. Where's there's there's a couple pictures of it. This is one of them. Uh, we can get a better one than that. In fact, let's just go to the wiki. The wiki. This thing just in the concept art had the look of a ship, you know? Um, where are all these pictures? Oh, original design. Yeah. So like this is a great one. Fantastic look. And it ended up not really translating into the game, unfortunately. They had to bulk it up quite a bit because it needed more space. Spaceships need more space inside when you actually are physicalizing everything. Who would have thought? But this was the original MSR. They had a big thruster here, um, had a smaller ramp in the back, and the ship itself was a lot more streamlined, a lot more sleek. So because of that, we've kind of moved over to the Spirit in hopes that that is the more sleek, compact daily driver ship from Crusader. But uh, that, that, that loss will always hurt people, I think. All right, what's another ship we can dive into? Let's talk about um, the Kraken. All right, all right, all right. Kraken is a 2018 ship and a, not a, I wouldn't say it's the most well-known ship. It came in with a, with a nice little spark of joy and people really liked what they were seeing, uh, but it never really made any progress. It's, it's a really big ship. It's a unique ship in that it's got landing pads on it. <laughs> so this is like, I mean, this is an actual carrier. Um, you've got two medium landing pads and four small ones, and they have to come up with both the technology to allow this to happen pretty easily while a ship is flying around. You know, you don't want these ships glitching through yours and blowing everything up, but they also need to come up with the reasons. Nobody has any reason to fly around with this many ships. So I think there are obvious reasons for why the Kraken wouldn't be in the game yet. Uh, not as obvious reasons for why they decided to sell it. <laughs> and the state of the game that it was but i think that goes without saying for a lot of the concepts the capital class concepts at least just are so wildly outside of the scope of the game right now that it was i think it was a lot of a very a fomo kind of buy maybe also the worry that this thing was going to get more expensive over time that's kind of part of their marketing practices i'm not a huge fan of what ends up happening is they release a concept, people buy it like crazy, and then it goes quiet for years, and then it ends up coming to game, people buy it again because those are the new people learning about it. This is this ship's still going to be a wise away, I think. I don't think we'll see this until we see the Liberator first. Also on the roadmap, uh, backlog. Okay, there's our next one on the, on the uh, backlog. Let's see. Polaris, Polaris. When did you get it? It was 2015, 16? Yeah. 2016. This is the only ship that hasn't been produced from 2016 yet. So that's actually, that's not bad. Um, we got the Buccaneer, Dragonfly Black, MPUV Cargo, Prospector, Razor, Terrapin, Vanduul Blade, MPUV Personal, and Vanguard Hoplite all were delivered from 2016, with the Polaris being the last one to do. So it actually looks like that is our most complete year besides 2012, which is at 93%, that, that year, 9 out of 10 ships, 90% done. So they've got, yeah, 6 to 14 crew, 216 SCU of storage. It's a $750 ship, oh my god. This is an interesting ship. This ship was released in 2946. Now, I don't know if they're changing up the idea of Squadron 42 and when it takes place, because honestly, it's been a little while since they first introduced it. The way this was supposed to work out was that Squadron 42 takes place and the conflicts in Squadron 42 that we are going to play through all happen. At the end of that, or rather even maybe not even at the end of that, I think it's before that all happens, the military makes the decision that they want a gigantic missile boat. So they hire RSI to make it and throughout Squadron 41 and the time thereafter, they're producing this ship, which then is introduced to our arsenal in Squadron 42 Part 2. But 2946 is like in lore seven years ago. 
So we don't actually know if they're just going to change the date that Squadron 42 takes place, if they're going to change the lore of how this ship was introduced, or if they're just going to scrap it all and say, okay, it's already in the game. But this is a very important military-based ship with a bunch of missiles that people love. And yes, it is supposed to be, what well, seems to be at least, the next capital ship that's getting released to Star Citizen. This seems like the first ship the first capital ship that they are going to focus on making sure actually gets added into the game in their new push to make capital ships matter again. And we do have, ah oh man, we have confirmation of that. All right, here we go. Like this. Um, one of the most voted up questions here is about the Polaris. Uh, simply put, is the Polaris actually in production? It shows that it is on the progress tracker, but the Apollo was once on the progress tracker at one point as well, and priorities change, and yada, yada, yada. So, uh, I want to go to camera John here. But that's there's one. Right, camera John. There we go. John, the questions. Uh, oh, so no, but, uh, I, that just sounded like Ben wanted the question. No, no, I didn't. Oh, good, question. Ben. No, no, you, you, you were talking crap. Oh, okay, Ben. Oh, I, um, so is the Polaris in production? I'm going to talk about the Apollo. Uh, oh. <laughs> let's talk about capital ships and when they're in development. So Apollo. Um, <laughs> the Apollo is now a capital ship. Yeah, yeah, it got <laughs> through so much. Um, all right, we'll talk about the Polaris. So the Polaris is in, it, I'd say it's more in pre-production. Like we are spending time investigating at the moment, as we've already kind of hinted on. Um, when it comes to doing our capital ships, we want to make sure that we're tackling them in a way that allows us to scale up to not just do one capital ship and we can tick off a few more from, from the lineup. Um, it's, it is like, Literally the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at it, breaking down the concept, breaking down what um, is involved with actually delivering it. I think what people need to understand as well is, you know, this is quite an old ship. The concept is quite old. There's a lot of gaps in it, as Corey mentioned. So really, we're just doing our kind of, um, you know, our sanity check on everything, make sure we've got everything in progress. It will be going into full production. Very soon. Sh shortly. Yeah, very, very yeah, soon. Very soon at TM. So Chris deleted the old. So that was our update in, when was this? I think this was June, early June of 2023. May, late May of 2023. And by the July monthly report, I believe it was, they had acknowledged that they had started production on that. So that is going to be something that we see progress probably over the next like 18 months. Um, and it's gonna be slow. It's a big ship. But what they're gonna be able to do with this is they will build it out. They'll get a bunch of assets, much like they did with uh, the the, um, the Cutlass and the Caterpillar and the Corsair that now help them make other Drake ships like the Vulture and, I don't know, something else coming up. What else is there Drake related that might be coming out? Ba -ba 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 I don't know, the Kraken someday, I guess. But that's kind of what they do. They make a ship from a company. That company builds out the assets, helps them make other ships in the future. In this case being the Perseus, which is uh, another pretty cool looking ship. And I believe it's a gunship, very cool gunship. It's a, a frigate, but a large frigate, 100 meters long, which is actually shorter than I thought it was. I think it's maybe, um, what's it called? Uh, Carrick? I think that's about the Carrick length. Let's see. Anybody know how long the Carrick is? Can you get it before I can find it? 74 meters so it's actually a bit longer than the carrick like 25 meters longer than the carrick but it can transport a lot it's a big ship very cool looking war looking ship kind of thing oh never mind the carrick grew that that page was outdated gotcha so we're looking at about 126 meters so this thing is smaller than the carrick but when you look at it in these pictures it looks massive it looks like idris size to me so it takes a little bit of calibration when you're looking at it. You get an idea here that it looks pretty similar in size to the Hammerhead. And this is another big ship that's, again, on on the, uh, on the backlog, mainly because it is a big ship, also because it's got big guns on it. And the type of warfare, the type of combat gameplay in Star Citizen this is going to be the bread and butter for isn't in the game yet. So until that is happening more and more often and they can actually test how capital ship combat would work, they're not going to put that ship in the game and spend all that time on it because it'll be worthless when it gets into the game. You know what I mean? Like, it's like the argument against the Reclaimer. The Reclaimer is a ship we got back in like 2017 or 2018 and we really didn't need it. But 
they wanted to sell more of them, so they got it in game. They wouldn't make the Reclaimer now until its gameplay was further along because they have to be a lot more efficient with what they're making and what they're not. So the Perseus would be one of those, and the Galaxy would be another one of those. The Galaxy is also an RSI ship, and it's freaking beautiful. Another great looking ship, RSI's new style uh, looks really good. So this is a ship that they introduced with modularity last year as a concept that people were not happy with. <laughs> this, this caused a lot of discourse in the community, which I happily dove straight into. But I, I don't know. I, I think a ship of this size makes sense. I don't know about the modularity of it, but this is another ship that would benefit from the Polaris being made because those assets, and you can see the similarities between them, right? They're all a bunch of space Doritos bunch of military Dorito looking looking fools if the Polaris comes in the game and they're able to use it to make where is that picture of it come on where are you hmm. do they not even have, they don't have it here the one picture I'm looking for well if this ship makes it in the game it makes it easier for this ship to be made and that's sort of the direction they're going in when it comes to capital ships. So you can see some of that lineup where that's happening. The whole series would be one of those. Um, but then there are some other ones back here that are iffy. I see I see a lot of clamoring in the chat for, a, I guess, a crowd favorite that I didn't know about. We call it the Gatac. We don't call it that. That's actually its name, Gatac Manufacturer. And they make what's called the Raylan. I don't actually know if it's Raylan or Ryland. This is smooth and peaceful cargo. When I try to pronounce this name, I am literally smooth and peaceful brain. But I try. So this is a cargo ship from the Xion. Xion are an uh, alien race in Star Citizen lore that we have yet to see in the actual game. I think if the UEE is the Roman Empire, they are literally the Xi. The Mongol? No. I, I don't even remember what empire existed in that space back then, but they were from the east. Yeah, the, the whole setup of the way that Star Citizen works in terms of lore geopolitically is actually very similar to that. You want to go to Astro Historian to learn more about that. He's got all the hookups in that sort of um, information. But generally, the Xi'an are in a position of being our longtime M enemy previously, who we made a peace agreement with that is relatively stable. They've kind of, they're, they're fighting a war on the other side of their empire against an enemy that is even stronger than they are called the Kirthak. So we, we don't talk about that. But on our side of the empire, they are actually bordering us in space. And so we have a lot of trade agreement with them. We take a lot of inspiration from them, and at times, they'll even sell their own ships to us. This is one of those ships. This is a cargo transport from the company Gatak, and it's, again, a ship that looks bigger than it is. So, like, this thing looks huge here, right? You see these little tiny people here, little cute ants. And then you go in here, and you see that it is 54 meters long. It's just really freaking tall at 67 meters. So, was it a Ming Dynasty? Okay. So, this is an interesting ship. 320 SCU of cargo. 54 meters long. Clearly not human made. So, it's a fairly large ship with a unique construction. Um, a brand and style from an alien species that isn't in the game yet. So, obviously, they haven't built that out very much and uh special made cargo boxes that's a lot of bespoke stuff right so again this is another ship that it makes sense they introduced the concept but they don't they haven't had much reason to make it um up until now and interestingly enough they have started to talk about that possibility so if you go to Aopoa, here it is. God, I could not find them. Uh, if you go to Aopoa, 
and you take a look at their ships, the Santok Yai is coming out pretty soon. This this is a, this marks a pretty big deal because this is the last Aopoa ship that I think they need to do actually, because they've done. Let's see, car to all the Nox. Yeah, I don't know what the Vulper is. I think that's this is something they haven't really talked about coming to the game. But they've done the car to all. They've done the Nox. They've done the Nox Q and all the other Noxes. Now they have the Santok Yai, and. This would be the last alien ship that we would see until we know we don't know where to go from there. And obviously, I think they always want to be working on alien ships. So they have talked about now the team that's working on the Santok Yai, possibly move on, moving over to Gatak, who is a different alien manufacturer from the same species to work on the Raylan. And that would bring us another large cargo ship, yes, but also a very, very different kind of ship from everything else. I think it'd be pretty cool to see that. All right. Alien ships. So we've talked a little bit about some of these ships in here. Um, we'll get back to specifics, but I want to talk about something else. I want to take a look at the other graphs that they have put together here that kind of go into more depth of what the backlog is actually consisting of. Now, the first one here shows total ships per year being added to the game. And Actually, I don't know if this is added to the game or as a concept. Let's see. They don't have the... Uh, um, no, I don't think they have the description here of what that is. I'm not sure if this would be total added to the game or concepted. But the, the number, the overall number does decrease over time. Let's see. Variance. Yeah, I think this would be added to the game that one's less clear let's go to this one easier to understand so this shows how many ships were made flyable uh by spring of this year it's about six months ago 122 out of 168 total ships introduced are flyable and in game that's 73 percent and you can see that generally that matches up with most of the ships with small ships making up 94 percent launched into game but capital ships are all the way down at here at 8%. And that's kind of, that's the big one that keeps holding us back. I think that's the big one that makes everybody notice that there's a backlog. It's just the general lack of capital ships. Because it's it's actually kind of hard to pick out all the other ones off the top of your head. Except for the more important ones like the Apollo and the, the Vulcan. So mostly the smaller you go or the closest to small ships. Which are the most common ships the more they've made. Um... And in from a certain angle, that makes sense. You know, they want to make the most ships for the most people who can use them because that would sell the most ships. It makes sense to make the more common ships flyable. So as long as this doesn't drop below 90 to 95 percent, I think that's good. But these larger ships do need to pick up. And over the next couple of years, we'll have to watch that, hopefully with the Polaris coming in at Capital Class. On to the next one. So this is another fun graph. Flyable versus roadmap versus concept in absolute numbers. And this again just gives you an idea. It's another way of seeing how many of the ships are flyable versus having been made. Now, I am fully in agreement with folks that like the backlog is too big. And especially considering the specific ships on the backlog, there needs to be more progress made more quickly. But in terms of overall ships in the game, I think this actually makes it look pretty decent. If they could whittle down this large section a little bit, there's like most of the ships in every category are flyable in the game. And as somebody who joined in 2018, that hasn't always been true. <laughs> there's, there were some times there when you really didn't have that many choices on what you wanted to fly, especially when it came to the medium sized ships. So. I'm not going to give them an excuse for not getting some of these ships into the game. Like I pointed out, there are a few in here that are kind of obvious. Uh, the Apollo being one of them. Next year, I would say the Expanse would be one of them. G12 is another one. Um, Legionnaire would be great to at least hear that they're working on. But for a lot of these other ones, kind of understandable. In fact, after we get through this last graph, let's go through each one and see what they're missing. Here we go. 
unreleased known ships and how they are listed on the roadmap. Okay, so this is all of the ships that have been unreleased, marked down by their size and denoted by their year. In terms of capital ships, most of them were announced before 2015. In or before 2015. So in terms of capitals, they actually kind of stopped announcing them, but that might also be because they changed the definition of a capital, right? Look at all these ships that maybe you would think are capitals like the Perseus or the Galaxy, but they're actually just large ships. So there are a lot of large ships that need to be worked on. Medium ships, we see four of those about to be put into the game at the end of this year. So soon there will only be two more on the list, one of them being the Hull B. And uh, for the small ships, the SRV is almost in game, so that'll be a good one. The Legionnaire is, is one that I'm very confused about with the Legionnaire. I don't know what they're trying with that. Like, are they trying to get the Legionnaire in for hacking gameplay? Because they don't really talk about it like they do. But why else would they be working on it? The Liberator is one that I would have expected to come into game, though, before 4.0. And then we have the snub ships, which the X1 is the only thing on there, and that one we know is also being worked on. The Lynx was just added to the game, um, but none of these other ground vehicles have any sort of sign of coming into the game. I think the G12 might be getting worked on right now, but we'll have to see about that in the next monthly report, which comes out this week. So a lot of large ships and a lot of capital ships. And unfortunately, those take most of the work. And that's why it does seem like right now they are really starting to get into understanding how long it'll take for them to make them. To finish this off, let's take a look at the different ships that are on here and see if there is like an obvious reason for us not to have it yet. And, and maybe make a connection between a, a feature or a deliverable that has been mentioned before in the past that might explain it. That sounds like an interesting little activity. Call it tomato torture, because it sounds disappointing. All right. Idris M. The Idris class of ship is, I think it's also a frigate. They're pretty huge. And they are your premier ship in Squadron 42. This is the ship that you're going to, I don't know if it's the M or the P, I think it's the M. Yeah, the M is the military variant. This is the ship that's going to be your home in Squadron 42, where you go to check your home base. Um, it's where you'll always return to after a mission and see uh, other NPCs to socialize with, where you'll get more missions, where you'll advance the story. This one is kind of obvious in that they don't want to spoil it, and this was one of their big... Uh, excuses back in the day. They don't want to spoil it before it comes into Squadron 42, so they don't put it in Star Citizen first. On top of that, I think this also just has too much internal capital ship gameplay for them to really know all of the details of the inside. And a ship this big is just, is there any point in finalizing it before you do that stuff? So there is still plenty that needs to be done with this ship's interior. Uh, they even confirmed in that YouTube video we watched a little bit earlier that this is not a completed model. This is not ready to go in the game. They are just able to get it into the game during certain events that we can fight against and watch go parade around and fireworks. Yay! So that's the Idris. That's the only ship from 2012 that hasn't launched yet. The Banu Merchantmen. Oh boy. This ship is... This is... This ship's going to have such a... I'm going to have so much fun making a video about this ship being made. The Banner Merchantman is a bazaar. It's a literal flying bazaar. It's meant to be a shop where people can dock to the ship, come in, sit around holograms and look at cool displays of what they might be buying, all being held into the, uh, in the cargo center in the storage bay. You got rooms for private meetings between large um, weapons manufacturers. And honestly, can you guys imagine the cool espionage sort of data running or data brokerage based missions that they could write into the game for that take place on a ship like this one of the most exciting things about capital ships is they're not just ships that we get to play on as characters these are also the set pieces for missions when we start getting more narrative missions in the game and like as a set piece goes 
we're going to be able to interact with the ship and do all these different things on it that you can't in normal games because those normal games make the vehicle for that set piece and then forget about it. We get a set piece that's fully interactable. Sorry, that just, that excites me. Anyways, this will be a cool set piece for missions. It's also going to be a very complex ship, I think, for them to make gameplay wise. And while they were working on it and hyping it up quite a bit a year or two ago, um, probably they should not have been because they ended up losing the people who were working on it. The, those people moved on to another job and this ship had to go on the back burner. A big reason because of that, or a reason, big reason for that is that much like the Gatak Raylan, this is a large ship from an alien manufacturer and they haven't really fleshed this kind of thing out before. So it takes a lot of high end, you know, you wanna get somebody who's very highly ranked, has done a lot of work for your company, who has proven that they know what they're doing when they're defining a brand new design structure. And unfortunately, the person who was doing that left. So they have to now wait until somebody else gets all the way up to speed and gets to the point where they can start to um, work on this as well. So unfortunately, this one is gonna be a ways away. I think mainly this didn't happen because of that alien structure that it has, but also because it would need so much commerce and economy related gameplay to be in there in terms of like trading and NPC interactions and ships docking to ships that a ship like that's gonna just be a glorified cargo hauler if it does come into the game. Next up on this list is the Hull C. Now remember, this list is from six months ago. This isn't completely up to date. Uh, the whole sea is on here. We know that it's coming in game. We literally have flown it in our stream. So whole sea, good to go. Orion comes after that. The Orion is the largest mining ship in the game so far. It is going to be a, I think five person, four to seven person juggernaut. This thing is freaking crazy. It's insane. It's actually got this really cool animation. I think this is it. No, they don't have it on here. Um, the pods on the outside that hold all your ore actually move. There we go. This is it. They actually rotate and, and it looks really nice. It's not very detailed on here, but you can kind of see it in this video. These little pods rotate around the central axis and just a very cool sort of almost Nostromo looking look, kind of like the Reclaimer. It gives you that sense of, of the alien universe. Awesome ship, very cool looking. I'm excited to see what it does. It's got tractor beams on it. It's got mining lasers on it. It can crush asteroids and then process them as full chunks. It has grown. This is how big it used to be compared to a constellation you can see over here. And this is how big the model is now. So this is a large ship. This is a big one and they're not gonna be making it for a while. They did do some gray box or white box work on it. So they had started some of their design around it, which is, I think, at least they have some basis and, and some knowledge of the scaling that goes into it. But I don't think this thing will be in game until the mining that we're doing right now in our smaller ships is defined and understood. We have tractor beams working very well. Um, we have multi-ship commerce working well, and we have an economy that can handle mining at this scale, as well as the mineable assets for this. This is going to include, I think, an entirely different way of mining to be formed. So don't expect this for a while, but that also explains, again, why it's not in the game. There's a lot of stuff that has to work for this to work. Um, it's a four to seven person ship, so it's going to need things like server meshing to make sense as well. Carries a lot of cargo, so it probably needed to make sure that larger cargo boxes would work and the economy picked up for it. So another ship that they could make it, but the, without the gameplay, it doesn't make much sense. Do they make the gameplay first or the ship? They're starting to now opt for the gameplay. Next after the Orion was the Idris P, which is stuck behind the same problem as the Idris M. So that does 2012 and 2013. On to 2014, we've got a lot here. We've got the Crucible. Crucible is a repair ship. It is your repair space station owned by a player out in space. It has a removable module to it that can, I think, fly around on its own. Yeah, you can see here, it can kind of keep this vehicle and, and ship bay in here, or it can remove it so that a large ship can move into the cradle and get some repair work done. 
in this shot you can see there's a hornet over here um this is an old ship a very old concept you can kind of tell from the concept art that it's rather old in style i mean look at the idris looking completely different here eh, not completely different but definitely different but you get an idea of the size of it it's fairly big um 90 meters long so it's up there and it's gonna take repair drones i think if i'm not mistaken this thing does have drones on it might not i might be wrong about that but it does need to be able to do ship repair it needs to be able to have a detachable component and it obviously needs to be able to have a reason in the game in terms of repair did they say it was getting bigger i think they did say this was getting bigger at some point which wouldn't surprise me as other ships came into the game since this was concepted so again another one that's missing its gameplay um you i mean i would say you might be able to bring this in for the sake of people doing handheld repair in the vehicle bay but we our handheld repair isn't even in the game you, we don't have component changes really um repair is just the opposite of hole scraping so the gameplay's not there in the next two years though this would be something that might want to start being considered in my opinion it's got drones too okay drones is something that we'll talk about with the uh with the apollo all right the endeavor is another one another these old ones really have uh, a lot of reasons i mean the, the endeavor might actually be the last ship made for this game <laughs> If you don't know, the Endeavor is a modular, massive science platform. Currently concepted at 200 meters, but will probably end up being bigger. And it is meant to have a detachable front section that can fly as its own spaceship. Multiple, car, uh, multiple pods that can attach to it as modules. And the ability to do things like deep space scanning, farming on board, a full-on atomic science center. Um... A particle collider, sorry. Service crew modules, general science pods, fuel pods, like barracks. Uh, this is this ship is insane. This ship is actually <laughs> crazy, and I don't know when they would ever make it. This is, uh, like I said, I could see this just being the last ship they make, and. There's no knowing when it could come out. I'm sorry to anybody who has ever bought one of these. There's so much work that has to go into the gameplay before this would ever make sense to bring into the game. But maybe they'll bring it in before that, right? Maybe they'll just make it some giant hunking carrier that flies around doing nothing. We can hope. But yeah, I, I, I don't think we're going to see that one for a while. It'll probably be the last thing on here. The Genesis Starliner, however, I don't know. What do you guys think of the Genesis Starliner? The thing is useful, but at the same time, they have introduced now the 890 Jump, the E1, and the Constellation Phoenix, which can all be the first thing to get passenger transport gameplay. So if like, you don't need the Genesis to introduce passenger transport gameplay, how long will it take for this thing to get that gameplay or get into the game after it's been introduced? Because this is another one that I don't know if they're going to work on it anytime soon. I love this, pic this picture of it in particular. And I like the idea of Star Citizen building out more of the lore around people who are just living normal lives. And using spaceships as like taxis almost or as ways to get around. One of the things I've... I've kind of liked about Starfield is that they've made planets, even though the planets feel small, they've made them feel like they are very self-contained. You go down, you meet people on this planet. These are people who haven't flown off planet their entire life. And I know that's going to exist on Star Citizen. We just haven't really got to see it yet. You can tell already that with these derelict outposts that they're making, they're talking about planets not really getting explored to the point that somebody could be out there for decades without ever being discovered kind of crazy on a planet like microtech but maybe on moons i could see something like that possibly happening um maybe i don't know i, I probably would have to be more of a frontier system than anything but i do want to see more of that like everyday life kind of situation going on in these systems and genesis starliner and passenger transport ships are kind of all about that that being said 
Don't expect anything about this until passenger transport is in-game, probably via another ship first. So uh, this one isn't really being held back by passenger transport. I mean, the 890 jump came into game, and I understand they wanted to get a capital ship in the game for that, but this one seems like it could be a go-to choice. They would just have to go and reconcept it, so it might be too much work for them to consider. I don't know. Oh, I guess they'd also need all of the stuff that comes with making passengers happy. So yeah, that would probably take a lot of reconstructing of the interior once they realize how all of that passenger transport gameplay would work. So you're just adding to the tech debt. All right, Javelin is behind the same problem as the Idris, Squadron 42 related. Also one of the bigger ships in the game. Um, but besides that, it's technically in the game as an NPC you can fight against. I'm not going to say that means it's launched or flight ready. But they at least put it in the game to, to fight against. I don't know if there's any other excuse. It's a combat ship. So there's no other reason for it to not be in game other than uh, server meshing doesn't allow for a ship that big to have the proper crew. And they want to save it for Squadron 42. The Lynx is in game. We have seen it's being uh, it was added, I think, in 319. So that one can be taken off of here as well. The whole B, D, and E were all waiting for the same stuff as the whole C. So we might start to see work on those uh, now that the whole C is in game. At least the, the D and the E. Or the D and the B. The E is a separate model from those two. The C is the big version of the B. Or no, I'm sorry. The B is the big version of the A. The C is the big version of the... No. The B is the big version of the A. The D is the big version of the C, and the E is a special ship on its own. <laughs> God. So the E might take a little bit while longer after that. All right. Onwards to 2016, we've got the Polaris. That is one that we've already been over today, and uh, it's a combat ship. So much like with the Javelin, I don't think there's too much reason to not be building this one, other than the fact that they didn't have the assets and they didn't want to focus on capital ship gameplay, but now that it seems they're moving into it, this does seem like one that they would be doing. Before this, though, there was no reason, other than they just didn't want to work on it. They thought it was too big. Because um, this ship would have worked, I believe, before this, besides the size 9 torpedoes, which I think we do have. I don't think there was any reason to hold back on the Polaris. So it's good that they are finally starting to work on it. Moving on from 2016 to 2017, we've got the Pioneer. <laughs> I think... I just searched Pioneer. I think the Pioneer is probably one of those ships that definitively we can say that Star Citizen should not have introduced when it did. They were on one that year. They really were. They... I don't think that was the same... What year was that? Was that 2017? Is it going to show me that? No, it's not going to show me what year that was. Um, Yeah, that was 2017. I believe that was the same year they tried to charge to watch the second stage content online. Right? Or was that 2018? That might have been 2018 they did that. But in this year at CitizenCon, they introduced to us uh, the Pioneer ship with the ability to buy a land claim beacon. This, this hit, this hit in a different kind of way. Because what ended up happening was people thought they were literally selling the land on planets. They thought that you were getting a plot of land and nobody else would get access to that when they were really basically just selling the little beacon in game that you would eventually be able to go out and take out and, and claim some land. Um, not a huge deal, but it did not come off very well. And this ship was introduced alongside the concept of base building. Base building is nowhere to be seen, not even close. It's going to be a while for base building. So clearly this ship had no reason to be worked on either uh, and no reason to be introduced. This was just something that they were hyping up another game feature, raising some money during the event with no intention of delivering this ship anytime soon after it was introduced. Not a good look. And this continues to sit in the backlog and probably will continue to sit in the backlog for years. This was just not a good introduction to the game. It's a really cool ship. Like, I love the way it looks. I love the idea behind it. 
the idea behind the gameplay that you need to bring somebody who specializes in building bases down to your location and actually physically do it awesome uh but not at the not in 2017 <laughs> i mean here we are six years later and this has barely even been mentioned so this is one that should have been introduced later on and there is really I mean, obviously, the excuse of not making this is that base building is not in the game, but there was no excuse in introducing it anyways. This was the least likely, I think, besides the Endeavor for us to see coming out anytime soon. And the Endeavor, at least, was introduced back when the game didn't even have planets to, to land on, you know? That was a different concept of a game back then. Next up, we've got the X-1. The Origin X-1 is a hover bike. The last hover bike we need to get into the game before all the hover bikes are complete. This one's a weird looking one, though. Straight up looks like you're sitting in it backwards. Like, if you look at this, can you tell which side is the front? Because <laughs> it's not the side I would have thought of, but you are facing to the left in this picture. Yeah, the left is the front. It's very weird. You sit in it basically like a motorcycle. Let's see if we got a... You can kind of see the little, little head there sticking out. Here's a picture of somebody in it. So it's got this weird shape to it. You know, Origin, they like to be fancy. Um, and there was no reason for this not to be in-game. So we had the Nox and the Dragonfly. So as a hover bike goes, this thing should have been in the game a while ago. And it's good that they're working on it now. I really do want to see this thing launched this year or early next year. Because it's already taken long enough. It's not a super important vehicle. It's not going to make a difference to the game. But it will be taken off the backlog. And it's going to be good to see it enter. We're on the Apollo. So the Apollo... Um, Oh, gosh. Ah, the Apollo. The Apollo, the Apollo, the Apollo. This is another ship that probably should already be in the game. But I think there's one key thing holding it back. So, this is a medical ship. Made by RSI, yet again. You can tell it's got a lot of the same kind of styling as the Constellation. And even a little bit of the Mantis. Little sharper lines. It's a nice size, honestly. If they made an exploration variant of this ship, I might choose that over the C1. In fact, how long is this? 43 meters. So this is like the same size as that C1A1E1 ship coming from Crusader. But you could argue it looks better. It's basically going to be a flying clinic. You'll have six medical beds in it. You'll be able to uh, take care of specific ailments that are coming from more hard-hitting uh, injuries and stuff than, say, your, I think your Cutlass Red. So the reason that this ship, I think, is lagging behind a little bit is because it has Shepard Medlift drones. Each Apollo comes equipped with two Medilift semi-automated emergency extraction pods, each capable of lifting up to 206, 226 kilograms quickly and securely from ground to ship, each drone is outfitted with payload preservation armor, auto gyro stabilization, and shock balance. Ooh. So this is definitely the kind of ship that is probably going to see medical gameplay brought up to the next level before we get it. And if we're looking at medical gameplay right now, uh, actor status T2 would be where that's coming from. Including hygiene. NPC status tracking, multiple bytes, DNA integrity, medical insurance, cybernetic limbs, and cloning. Honestly, this might not even come out before that. Uh, you might have to wait until medical actor T3, because this is... I don't know how much... Like, these are two different types of features. You've got drone as its own separate feature. They're going to have drones for mining, salvaging, transportation and medical obviously but you also have medical gameplay so like is this talking are, are we gonna have to wait for some kind of different form of medical gameplay that has to do with medical drones or are the drones going to be basically carrying boxes but instead of people instead of boxes they're people you know what i mean like there are a couple reasons why this ship could take longer if we're talking about the features that it includes as a ship I would have loved to see this coming before medical gameplay because it's just beautiful. But I imagine they want to make sure they have everything that they need to know what's going to be around medical beds, what's going to be inside of medical beds, uh, how much space medical beds will need, 
what kind of attachments might need to be around them before they model the whole interior and make all these drones and then figure out, oh, things are going to change. So again, one that's definitely being held back by its gameplay. Especially unfortunate considering it's such a small ship and we already have the Cutlass Red. But next up is the F-8C Lightning. This is one that I think they're waiting on Squadron 42 for as well. Although somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I actually don't know if they've said they wanted to wait for Squadron 42. I know this is an important ship for Squadron. This is also a ship that you unlock by beating Squadron if I'm not uh, mistaken. But I'm, I, I, don't, I haven't expected them to put this one in game for a while. Is that correct? So this one's held back by Squadron. Uh, we've seen people fly this ship in game. If you can get it off the NPCs, then it is functional and you can use it. They just haven't polished it, brought it up to feature complete for the actual game. On to the Kraken. Ah, the Kraken. We talked about this one already as well, so I won't spend too much time on it. Um, but we talked about the technology that this one would need. Obviously, when it comes to logging out, logging in, storing ships, all that kind of stuff would have to be figured out in a much better way for this ship to make sense. Otherwise, you're going to have people doing all sorts of weird problems. We we drew the comparison to the ship trespassing. Um, something that they thought they could introduce into the game before they ran into a bunch of edge cases and realized they'd have to hold it back. I think the same thing would happen with this. You could introduce this to the game, but suddenly you'd have problems with people logging off, logging on, storing ships, uh, spawning ships, all that kind of stuff. And it's a big Drake ship on top of that. So they would have to put out a lot of time to develop the ship and a lot of time to develop the gameplay. I'm guessing they want to wait until the gameplay folks are ready to do that before they start working on the ship as well. And it's a lot of it's a lot of players on this one. 10 is the suggested crew size. But again, this is before all the gameplay has been figured out. After the Kraken is a Santak Yai. This is a combat-focused alien ship that we know is being worked on and should be in the game by the end of the year, I would say. This will be a good one marked off the, the backlog, as it means Aopoa is all done with their ships, at least for now. And we might start to see work on the Gatak Raylan, which we will get to a little bit later. Um, but yeah, it's just good to see another alien ship come out. That means they're getting further and further ahead on their alien backlog and understanding how those ships are made. Uh, Vulcan. Vulcan is another one that I wanted to get to today, especially because it's one of my favorites in the game. Really rarely talked about. This thing is a workhorse. This is one of the oldest... Actually, this isn't that old a concept. This is from 20, 2018 this was introduced, so not that long ago in terms of Star Citizen. Um, this one also has drones though, as you can see here, and before we get this ship, they're going to have to get drones working. Now, the good news on that is that the, oh, the Pegasus light carrier, there's a name you don't hear much. Um, the good news about that is that last year they mentioned that they are getting drones in the game in some way for Squadron 42. Because that is going to be working for Squadron 42, the work over to Star Citizen will be greatly reduced, which means that drones in Star Citizen might not actually be that far away. And when I say that far, I mean like the next 18 months, okay? I don't mean this year or something, but we might actually see talk about drones starting up, I would say probably after this big kind of dense packet of gameplay we're looking at right now, engineering, life support, bounty hunting V2, um, underground facilities, all that kind of stuff I think needs to be pushed out of the way and then we'll probably start to hear more about drone stuff maybe from the vehicle features team. But that's likely what's holding this one back a lot. Drones and repair and refuel because this is also a refueling ship as you can see here. There's a drone refueling of Eclipse and another one flying over here. And if I can find it super quickly, don't hold me to, don't hold me to it because I'm not sure if I ever saved this footage or not, but we have actually seen an early visualization of what, nope, I don't have it, a uh, visualization of what it will look like for the drones to be leaving and arriving at this ship. Don't expect it anytime soon, but for the most part, this thing's probably being held up by the drones and the actual repair functionality that we still don't have in game. The Expanse. The Expanse is a refinery ship. 
that was introduced not too long ago, actually. I think this one was concepted last year. So I actually, yeah, announced March 2022. This is something that I expect to see pretty soon. Um, there's not really anything holding this ship back besides refinery gameplay. And as we've been seeing in monthly reports, refinery gameplay is coming along. Now, there is something to be said about that because we have fuel refineries like this thing. Uh, this thing does refining of fuel. I believe it's just fuel. Uh, no, it's probably going to be ore and fuel. So it really depends on what they mean by refining gameplay. But I do think that this is an important part of completing the mining game loop. Once we get this ship, you will be able to explore and find, mine, refine, transport, and sell a resource completely with your own ships, which would be the first time Star Citizen ever gets a full player run and player defined um, game loop. That That's gonna be a huge moment. And I think this ship is the key if they don't introduce some other ship for that beforehand. So this is not one that I expect to wait too long for. I'm really hoping that we start to hear more about it being introduced in the next couple of months, honestly. I would like to hear about this ship being developed and um, ready to release shortly after 4.0 happens. After that, we've got the Nautilus, which was always kind of a weird addition in my eyes. This one caught me off guard for sure, and I don't, I don't know too many people who are super excited about this ship, to be honest. This is a mine-laying ship. This is like a, a a combat prevention ship, the kind of thing that you would use more defensively maybe, or if you're locking down a group of resources and you're trying to bring in your expanses, you, your Orions and all your stuff, and you know you're gonna be there for a couple days, you might bring in your Org Nautilus and lay a couple mines around so that they can shoot down ships that come near. This is really gonna be a group play or an org gameplay kind of ship, probably a specialized one that people don't take out very often. And obviously one that is dependent on mines, space mines, which I actually think might be on the tracker. So they got proximity mines. Um, I actually don't know if these are referring to FPS or vehicle proximity mines. I think they're FPS proximity mines. Here's space mines down here. In space, players and certain ships will gain the ability to release different types of space mines in a coordinated fashion in an attempt to trap, damage, and capture enemies or set up direct defensive perimeters. So this is designed solely for Star Citizen. So not Squadron 42, which is interesting. And clearly is going to have plenty more work to do since it finished up here in Q2 of 2023 and we've heard nothing about it. But I don't, I don't know when or why they would drop the Nautilus in game. It needs mines. Do we need mines? Not yet. <laughs> I think this would make more sense after other capital ships come in and they could see how people use them. This one is less, I think, less frustrating that they haven't made it and more frustrating that they introduced it, kind of like the Pioneer as well. From the Nautilus, we go to the SRV. This is a ship that we know is in production has been waiting for tractor beams to become a thing in game. And since tractor beams are now becoming a thing in game, we can see that it is being built and probably released by the end of this year. It was held back by vehicle tractor beams, which we can see here are finishing up work. So that makes sense that we're getting this ship now. Mark that one off the backlog. Here's one that doesn't make much sense as to why we're not getting it. The Ranger is a series of space motorcycles. Because you need it. Now, this is probably the smallest player carrying vehicle in the game. It kind of folds up really nicely and can fit in the back of a lot of ships. So this will be a good little vehicle, like a personal transport vehicle when we're doing a lot of on the ground gameplay. They've got three variants of it. One with more firepower, one with more... Um, cargo space and one with more speed as they like to do in different ships. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see how they use these. Um, they seem like they're going to be very good fodder for NPCs to use on missions that you'll have to do like target practice with and stuff. We'll have to see how useful they are for players though. This is something that you could say was held back by ground vehicle mechanics because they didn't have a model for two vehicle, two, two wheeled vehicles to roll on the ground. 
the obviously the counter argument is couldn't you have just like kind of hacked together something out of the current vehicle system it's that's a back and forth um i don't know if there's any other legitimate reason for this to not be in the game other than just they didn't have a modeled two-wheeled vehicle situation and now that they're improving the ground vehicle driving mechanics in this new game in this newest update maybe we will see them start to work on two-wheeled vehicles as well and then we've got the variants of those the kraken and the variants of the ranger as well for that year next up origin g12 another origin vehicle that you're like why why isn't this in game this is a simple rover much like your cyclone um it drives fast it goes room and it's got cargo space it's higher quality it's a luxury vehicle as they call them even though it's got a turret on top luxury pew pew um but there's no real big reason for this to not be in game other than they just didn't go out and make the design for it and put it all together and slap it in game we have four-wheeled vehicles plenty of them i'm hoping that this is one of the unannounced vehicles that they've got on the monthly reports but we're gonna have to wait and see in like i said the monthly report coming out this week and probably the one next month i do hope they're working on these though because no reason for them not to be in game i think if they're if you're ready, you got upgraded driving mechanics and you've got other rovers in the game. Get this one in. Make it happen. That would knock off two of the variables from that year as well. Bring us down to just one thing introduced from 2020 that's not in game. So like there are definitely they're on like a they're on an edge here. If you exclude capital and large ships, they're on like a tipping point of really having a a vast majority of the ships and stuff in game. All right, from there, we've got the Perseus. We talked about this one a little bit. Perseus is what's going to probably benefit from the Polaris getting worked on as the follow-up RSI ship of a similar length. I think it's actually a little bit smaller. 100 meters long, 50 meters wide, 20 meters tall. This is a pretty cool ship. I, I would like to be a crew on one of these ships at some point just because it looks so cool. Um... I imagine the the type of heavy combat missions you can take with this kind of ship involved would be different from what your normal player is used to. And I'm excited to see how they form together missions made specifically for capital class groups, you know? They have these gigantic missions that play out kind of like Xenothreat does right now, but they're just simple missions that you take and if you take it in a smaller ship, obviously you get scraped. Take them in these kinds of ships and go out with a full group with uh with support and and all that stuff really exciting concept so i look forward to seeing this one get made but again it's one in the backlog that really doesn't have any obvious reasons for being in the backlog other than it's a large rsi ship and they haven't made the design for it yet and they could have started with this instead of the polaris but they started with the polaris instead probably just because they know more about it already this one might get worked on afterward but i wouldn't expect this for years and again this is one of those ones that weighs pretty heavy on the uh, on the backlog. All right, up next is the Liberator, introduced in what was that 2020, 2021, and the Liberator is one that I think when they announced it, I was really expecting it to be something they wanted to bring in for 4.0, and uh, and Pyro. So this was first introduced at CitizenCon 2951, which was the first time they dropped pyro into a demo and actually showed it to us it wasn't the real pyro obviously but they wanted us to start thinking about pyro so they also dropped in a ship that was all about transporting other small ships where they couldn't survive pyro is going to have a lot less space stations so they need these sort of ferry ships that can carry your small ships around and not use all their fuel this doesn't have repair refueling and rearming facilities but it does house facilities for guests and crew so you might be able to log on on and off from this ship it won't be held back by those repair and refueling services, but it might also be held back by the same things that the Kraken is held back by. Um, logging on and off, storing your ship, calling your ship, making a ship stay on the ship, then not glitching through the surface of it and blowing everybody up. I was hoping this is a ship that was going to be in by the time we got Pyro. And I don't know if 
they have plans for that still. But I would certainly like to hear about them. Let's see, from there we've got the Odyssey. Oh my gosh. All right, so the Star Citizen Odyssey is, uh, man, there's no telling when or why they would bring this one out. It would be just about the same as the Carrick. We didn't have any reason to get the Carrick when we did, other than they just, they got it done. Um, I don't know what would be holding this back. Uh, you could say exploration gameplay. That's like a long list of different things that don't necessarily have to do with exploration. So, deep space probing, maybe. But I don't even think they've talked about this thing having, I guess they all have probes if they're exploration ships. Uh, there's just nothing to tell us um, why, we, why, why we would get this. Yeah, there's the refinery on board. I don't think the ref I mean, I guess, yeah, the refinery could be what frees us up of this ship. Maybe once they have the refi refinery working, they can just put it in as like a home base for a home base for uh, for mining missions. But it also feels like this ship would be missing some of that scanning gameplay that goes behind actually finding this stuff. Then again, the 400i was dropped in as an exploration ship without any sort of exploration. So yeah, maybe this is only dependent on refining gameplay as well. Hmm, that'd be interesting. That being said, I imagine they'd probably go with the Expanse before they went with this one. But this is a beautiful ship. Oh my gosh. I wasn't crazy about it at first. I always say I it really grew on me. And... I don't know, it's something about it's something about this this view. This part. The front third of this ship really comes off as this like majestic space odyssey sort of thing. Maybe this will be something that only is dependent on refining gameplay. But this actually wasn't introduced too long ago. This was um yeah, about two almost two years ago now. This is, again, it's not too long in Star Citizen time. It's a pretty long time for most games, but uh, it's going on two years. I don't expect this thing to be talked or worked on at all for a while. Not until well after the Polaris is done and they've gotten other ships. I think we won't see any other capital ships really serious in conversation until the Polaris is in game. All right, next ship is the Raylan, which we talked about already being blocked mainly by the fact that it is a large... It's a large ship from an alien manufacturer which clearly hasn't been built out or designed yet hopefully the Santok Yai team moves on to this after they're done and they can start to figure out the design elements of this company but um yeah they just haven't put in the time for it's, it's another capital it's not a capital ship it's a large ship but they it's another big ship that they haven't put in the time to define the design and we'll have to wait longer because of that They've also got these special cargo pods back here that'll take custom design work. So again, same old, same old. It's a big investment for something that probably isn't worth it yet given the gameplay that we have. But with some of these bigger gameplay systems coming in, it's probably looking more likely for them. And that's why they're kind of talking about it after the Sentak Yai. But we'll have to see. Moving on to 2022, we've got the Galaxy, a modular ship. We talked briefly about this one already as well as a follow-up after the Polaris, so don't expect this to come or be talked about before the Polaris is in-game, but this would benefit from the creation of that one. It also is going to have to rely a lot on modularity, and I'm guessing by the time the Polaris is in-game, modularity will be existent in some way, through the, maybe the Retaliator or something, but we don't know about that for sure. This thing's gonna have a cargo bay, a medical bay, and a refinery that it can use. Obviously in that cargo bay you can store a ship, so you'll be able to have a smaller exploration ship in there. And ultimately it is labeled as a modular ship, though I take it as an exploration ship focusing on versatility. The galaxy is capable of equipping its crew to handle any task in the verse. Feels mainly exploration focused, in my opinion especially since you're getting the Carrick as a loner, but I guess the Carrick is also kind of multi-purpose, if you will. Um, a solid ship. 
at this point held behind by the fact that it doesn't it, the other ships that came before it haven't been made this is another large rsi ship sitting in the exact same bucket as the as the um polaris modularity wouldn't hold this back they've introduced other modular ships the gameplay wouldn't hold this back it's got guns it can fly around just like the 400i really this thing is just waiting for the actual design which comes with the other large rsi ships it's this one's going to be a while as well no excuse for that but it is what it is legionnaire Did that say the Legionnaire was introduced? 2022, last year. Legionnaire is this cool looking little Halo mixed with alien, mixed with honestly a little bit of Starcraft I'm, I'm getting. Um, little dropship, little space to space dropship. It's got docking capabilities through the front and it's actually built with a hacking system so that you can force other ships to open. The, the way that docking is going to work is you can always request docking with the ship but that ship can turn you down or allow you to join. The idea behind this is that no ship will be able to turn you down because you can hack into their systems, take them over, board their ship, all that jazz. Um, this one is probably going to be in some way linked to hacking gameplay, but I don't know what's going on with hacking gameplay. The scheduled work finished up a while ago. It was a long sprint of work, and I know they had to change the design of hacking partway through, which is why it took so long. That might be coming sometime soon, maybe 4.0. It might not. They haven't talked about it very much, but the Legionnaire is probably not something that they're thinking about doing particularly soon. Because again, this seems like it's heavily based around capital ship gameplay and capital class combat. And until they get some capital ships into the game, ships like this and the Crucible and the Vulcan, I might not have enough pull to get the time they need. You know, like they might, you wanna tackle the biggest fish that make the biggest difference. And if they don't know how capital class gameplay will work, these ships might not make as big a splash as if they was already working before they came in. Uh, and then finally the Spirit series, which we've talked about tonight a little bit already. The Spirit is basically done. We're, we're seeing the spirit come into the game in the next update in a 3.20.x patch, both the A1 and the C1. Obviously, the C1 is blocked by nothing other than progress. The A1 is blocked by size 5 bombs, which they've been working on. And then there's also the E1, which is being blocked probably by passenger transport gameplay. So we'll see this one a little bit later. But the first two, the A1 and the C1, are indeed coming out. And... After that on this list is just the UTV, which we know nothing about. It's kind of a sort of a leak and we don't know what's going on with that. But that is the ship backlog. That's all of it. It was exhausting. Oh God, I'm tired. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that is every ship that hasn't been introduced into the game, why it may not have and how long we might have to wait for it. I hope this helps some people better picture or imagine what we're looking at in terms of the ship backlog it's very much weighted towards these capital class and large size ships and that's going to be the real struggle over the next several years is watching those come to the game and seeing how much they're slowed down by other small ships maybe if they slow down on introducing small ships we might see them get further on in those capital ships but who knows either way i hope that helped someone cheers to you all thanks for watching <laughs>